Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome all of you to this session on decentralized identity for travel sector. A quick introduction regarding myself. I'm Devjani Mohanty, SSI expert at Art ID. I'm quoted as one of the top 30 blockchain influencers of India 2021 and blockchain catalyst of India in year 2019 and 20. I'm a solution architect working in blockchain for past five years and I'm also author to five Amazon bestseller books on blockchain, some of which are translated to German and Chinese to reach the wider mass. For the past two years, I'm working in blockchain backed decentralized identity and my latest work is on decentralized identity or self-sovereign digital identity. With government imposed travel bans and nationwide lockdowns 2020 will go down as the worst year in the history of modern day travel and aviation industry in this slide you can find how negatively covid 19 has impacted the stock prices of cruise and airline sector and how much the u.s travel industry has lost in this time period. Nonetheless, 2020 has accelerated digitization and automation of many aviation workflows. Today, increasing passenger safety, boosting passenger confidence and making airport and airline operations significantly more efficient, adaptable and intelligent is the new blueprint for survival and growth. In today's session, I would cover the inefficiencies in travel sector, especially in COVID times, uh, certain innovative use cases with self-sovereign identity or SSI and biometrics, and art ID's state-of-art architecture that can cater to the need of travel and especially the aviation sector. For this session, I have selected airlines and airports. Why? Because we professionals mostly use flights for traveling to places and moreover in order to save our precious time. For example, I live and work in Delhi NCR and at the back of my mind, I always have the thought that my hometown Bhubaneswar is only two hours flight from Delhi. But how far that is true? If I add all the time needed by me to travel door to door to my parents in Bhubaneswar, it's close to six to seven hours. And most of this time I spend either in queues or in waiting. So airports across the world are getting busier every, every year. Traveling as an experience is always chaotic, inefficient, unenjoyable and unsafe. Can someday in future we can have, uh, we can overcome all these challenges and make these processes streamlined, safe and delightful? Let's find out. From the moment a passenger journeys to a departure terminal, uh, they are faced with a series of small but potentially stressful challenges. Uh, first finding the parking, then finding the baggage card, finding the correct departure terminal, finding the check-in, uh, check-in test. Um, all the while, the passenger might be wondering if they will make it to the departure gate on time. So here is a typical wait time that an airline passenger experiences during the air travel. Um, perhaps 10 minutes at the check-in, 20 minutes at the security check-in, again 10 minutes in the immigration uh, if it is an international travel and then 30 minutes in the waiting lounge and then few hours of flight, uh, again 30 minutes in the immigration, 20 minutes at the baggage collection and finally exit. Each step in this journey could be frustrating. However, the number I have shown here could be far too less. In bigger airports, this number can be painfully much more. In USA's New York Liberty Airport, the security check-in 
can take up to 60 minutes. In the right hand side, you can find the number of passengers leaving the airports in US in every 15 minutes. The maximum number you can find in US is O'Hare International Airport which is 485 passengers in just 15 minutes. In this slide, you can find that there are certain areas in the airport where we find either full or partial automation. For example, booking, back tag, and check-in. However, there are areas where manual intervention is high and the processes are relatively slow. For example, the security check-in and passport or border control. Obviously, you can find that the customer satisfaction is far too low in areas that are yet to be automated. Have you ever wondered why air travel is so time consuming and even if it's so, can these processes be streamlined? In this slide, you can find all the touch points of the journey where the user's identity is checked again and again. For example, booking the ticket, checking in, backdrop, security, border control and finally boarding. Now let's see how the data related to the digital identity are stored and maintained in the existing systems. The first model that came some three decades back was the centralized server where we used either LDAP or Active Directory or RDBMS to store a, a separate set of user ID and password for each application. The second model is the federated identity model uh, where we used a separate identity provider that has a centralized storage again for storing the credentials and it handles the access to several third party services. So in both these models, um, there is a possibility of mass hacking as well as single point of failure. Self-sovereign identity or SSI is a new decentralized model to manage digital identity. Here we have an issuer that issues verified credential to the user that is saved securely in the user's mobile device. At the same time, the issuer sends a signed reference hash to the public blockchain signing it with their own private key. The user then can share the whole or part of the data to a verifier organization along with issuer's public decentralized identity. Now the verifier can convert the data to a hash and check if the hash of the data matches with that on the blockchain to know that whether it's valid. This example can be a scenario where the issuer is the passport office and the verifier is the visa office and the user is sharing as much data needed by the visa office with uh, the user's own full consent. At a later point of time, if there is a need, then the issuer can revoke the hash by altering a small piece of the data and the verifier knows that the data is no longer valid. This architecture ensures integrity, ownership, privacy, security, and the validity of the data. And please note that in this architecture, there is no centralized data store. SSI in real life is far too complex. Let's say that Alice is born in a hospital. So the first set of verified credentials you would receive from the hospital. Now she applies for her national identity and so the government is approving and uh, allocating the national identity. Then she is producing both these credentials to a school or a college where she goes for her education. And on completion, uh, the university is again issuing one more set of verified credential to the user. And finally, she is joining an organization as an employee where she has to produce the certificates from all the previous issuers. So 
so all this kind of verified credential can be allocated and she can safely secure this in her own mobile device and as per the need she can share this information with different uh, verified organizations and she can also share this information this personal data in three different modes uh, which are the traditional mode zero knowledge proof and this uh, selective disclosure mode and self attested mode in traditional mode i'm sharing my name as it is that is i'm dejani mohanty uh, in zero knowledge proof mode i'm just answering uh, in true or false like somebody is asking me that whether i'm an adult i'm uh, just uh, you know replying saying that it's true and it can be verified and the third is the self attested one where you do not need to um, you know get a verified credential for anyone you are sharing it uh, this data on your own something like your hobby or something so again these data are um, you know uh, actually the hashed version of this data is available on a public blockchain so uh, this hash is created and uh, stored uh, by the issuers and the verifier can check the validity and the integrity of the data on the public blockchain again i'm telling you the actual data doesn't go to the blockchain but a hash of the data goes to the blockchain the ssi ecosystem is usually pretty complex where we have to handle the web standards uh, the authentication standards the blockchain and the decentralized identity network in uh, ssi network we have to handle many different layers at the center we have a public ledger or a blockchain then there is a private identity storage for each user or organization we have a agent or hub for message transfers as well as to replicate the data and we have to handle a client device for each user ecosystem of a self sovereign identity network is not limited to only data sharing how do you get access to such a system how do you save different type of personal data um well for an individual it's the mobile device or ipfs or cloud storage however for an uh, for i mean if you have to store the biometrics data it has to be saved only in the mobile device um uh, whereas the other data can go to the ipfs or can be stored in an encrypted manner either in the device and on the cloud storage so here you can see that alice has got all her personal data saved in her own mobile device so this personal data can be um in a verified credential which are alpha numeric in nature like the name or date of birth uh, blah 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 as well as the biometric templates whereas bob has his data stored in his mobile device as well as a copy on the ipfs or the cloud storage so that if the mobile is broken or stolen or lost then he can um, get retrieve all this information again from the uh, storage for an organization the data can be stored on the cloud storage and again we have a public dlt which is responsible for the creation of the decentralized identities and um, in the reference hash of the claims and also here we are able to do any kind of revocation if needed now it's time to explore a travel based use case in this use case the user has a smartphone running arthides app on it the user already has passport visa and biometric details verified and saved as verified credential in digital form now the user visits the airline's website for booking ticket producing passport visa in verified credential form the airline asks for covid test result and if the user doesn't have it then the airline redirects the user to couple of labs from where the user can get tested for covid now the user visits the lab and get himself or herself tested for the covid the lab shares a verified credential with the user that the user can save in the mobile phone 
The lab also writes a hash of the VC to the blockchain, signing it with own private key. Now the user visits the airline website again for booking the ticket and now the user can produce passport, visa details and the COVID test results and also can share live biometrics. The airline checks all these details and matches with user's face uh, that is there in the passport and if the payment is through then the airline can send a verified credential to the user's mobile phone which is the ticket the digital ticket the airline also writes a hash to the public blockchain signing it uh, with its own private key now comes the day of travel so as soon as the user enters the airport the user shares all this verified credential with the airport server now the airport server checks the hash of the verified credential on the blockchain and if it matches then through cameras the airport server can also match the face biometric template of the user with the one that is on the verified credential and and also matches the hash that is stored on the blockchain and if all valid then the check gates can automatically sense it from a distance and they can open it for the travel for, uh, of the user till the uh, check gates so uh, the user doesn't have to showcase any of the physical documents in any of these touch points so the advantages of this model are uh, many um, and here the governments uh, can verify the authenticity of the test and can also identify the people who are tested. Um, the airlines have the ability to provide accurate information to the passengers and on the test requirements. Um, and the laboratories have a means to issue a digital certificate to passenger um, that is recognized by the governments. And their travelers have got all the accurate information on test requirements. They are able to know that who are the labs who can get them um, uh, tested and from where they need to be vaccinated so all this information can be shared in a, uh, in a safe way and with uh, utmost privacy and security now let's explore some of our ideas area of research the success of a SSI product depends on many different factors so the first is what kind of crypto or what kind of public key infrastructure we are using uh, so that we can have a safe and secure data transfer secondly uh, what is the scalability and throughput of this model can it cater to the needs of millions if not billion uh, in the future because uh, we all know that uh, this uh, decentralized identity is for um, you know general public and their devices so we need high scalability here Third is, uh, is the uh, cyber security part handled efficiently? Um, and then is the solution interoperable? Can it be integrated with other decentralized identity network effortlessly? Then what kind of selective disclosure or zero knowledge proof model has been implemented here? Uh, is it robust enough to compare different type of integer values in different modes? For example, greater than, smaller than, not equal to, uh, etc. Um, very important factor here that who are the validator nodes. So here, please note that the public blockchain that we would be using in a SSI network needs to be very different uh, from uh, that in Bitcoin or Ethereum. The consensus model here should not be proof of work um, as Bitcoin has. Um, or Ethereum one had, uh, which is slow and expensive. What we need over here is either proof of stake or proof of authority um, or something similar so that the transactions are super fast and highly scalable and they can cater to the need of millions and billion people in and their devices. Hence the validator nodes um, or the nodes responsible to handle the consensus process and approve the transactions 
had to be run by organizations who are well known in the industry and finally um, how efficiently uh, this um, SSI network is integrated with biometrics that also um, uh, is very important for the success of this network uh, mostly because we won't give access to uh, the SSI net network on the basis of the same uh, old school user ID password or OTP models biometrics is is the best solution over here um, uh, for uh, you know the authentication purpose so um, this also plays a very important role so now let's explore one by one um, all these features from the earth id's point of view earth id uses sha256 based hashing and novel ed25519 public key signature system which is the fastest and safest at the moment earth id is backed by the hashgraph dld which is well known for its scalability and throughput and hashgraph is already tested with 10000 transactions per second and up to 6.5 million transactions per a day with finality within 5 seconds earth id uses hashgraph dld which is resistant against ddos cybill and spoofing attacks earth id is working on integration with other DIT networks and with other layers as per the requirements of business. Earth ID SSI network can share data in traditional zero knowledge proof or self attested modes. Earth ID uses finest homomorphic cryptology algorithms for comparing integers in zero knowledge proof mode. For example, we can compare integers um, uh, as greater than equal to less than equal to greater than or less than or not equal to modes uh, to find out a boolean as a output earth id uses hashgraph that has a council of 19 multinational corporations from around the world to govern the platform and the software that will run on millions of nodes globally to reach the consensus instead of mining or proof of work nodes on hashgraph gossip with each other comparing nodes on the transaction history of the network so hashgraph's validator nodes are industry leaders in different verticals as google ibm wipro dutch telecom fis tata telecom etc uh, who are the organizations that the industries can trust. Hashgraph is currently integrating with biometric solutions from um, the leaders in the industry and we are working on modalities like um, finger, face and uh, iris and in future we also have plans of uh, integrating with uh, behavioral biometric solutions like gait, uh, voice signature etc and we are uh, extensively working on the decentralized biometric experts so at earth id we are um, on the process of building a state of art architecture for self-sovereign identity and we are investing on all the different features um, and so that we will come up with the industry leading solution in ssi so here is Earth ID's state of art architecture that uses Hashgraph as its public DLT. So users have the option of storing their verified credentials such as name, date of birth, educational certificates, employment certificates, salary, vaccination details, etc. in their mobile device with the help of Earth ID app running on their device or even on a personal laptop user can also save their data on ipfs and get a printed copy of their data in the form of a cryptograph or qr code this is especially useful for people who do not have a smartphone or elderly or those who cannot efficiently operate the app on their device 
so with auth id we can create decentralized identity not only for humans but also for their mobile devices and iot based machines that can communicate and share information with utmost safety and security so thank you so much for watching this video if you want to know more then you can contact earth id you can directly write to me on linkedin and um, you can read my book blockchain for self sovereign digital identity which is publicly available on amazon thank you so much